guys! My name is Camille and I'm going to show you how to create a dynamic renaissance dress using Marvelous Designer 5. In case you don't know what Marvelous Designer is, in short, it's a cutting-edge cloth simulation software used by leading artists and studios to quickly create clothes for 3D models. It is used for games like Assassin's Creed, for 3D animations, as well as for movies like The Hobbit, Ted, etc. Since the clothes are dynamic, whenever you change your 3D model's pose, the clothes adjust themselves to the new pose and hang realistically. You can even animate the clothes and add wind to make them blow. Let me show you how quick and easy it is to make a dress. So here we are in Marvelous Designer. I'll refer to it as MD for short. I've loaded in a DAS 3D model that I'll be using to model the dress on. In Marvelous they refer to models as avatars. The way that clothes making in MD works is similar to tailoring clothes in the real world, with some small differences. To make clothes in MD, you need to create pieces of fabric. These are called patterns, and sew them together. Now, you don't need to learn real-world sewing and prick your fingers with needles, but you would need to learn the art of digital cloth making. You can control with different settings in the program how the fabric hangs, moves, animates and looks. MD is also great because you can see what the clothes look like as you modify the patterns, since all changes update real-time in the 3D garment window. Since some of you may be beginners or not know MD, here's a very quick introduction. This here is the 2D pattern window, where we will be creating our patterns. All these tools up here are for creating patterns, modifying them and sewing them together. To the left here is the 3D garment window, where we'll simulate our clothes to see what they look like. To the right here is the fabric pane, where we'll add fabrics as we need them. And down here is a property editor where you can change all kinds of settings from color to texture to physical properties, particle distance, seam folding, folding internal lines, thickness of the fabric, elastic settings, etc. etc. We're not going to get into all the features and settings of MD in this tutorial, so if you're a total beginner, I recommend you first learn to use the software properly. Alright, now that I've explained a bit about making clothes in MD, let's get down to making a dress. The dress is going to be made of several pattern pieces, several for the shirt, then for the skirt, for the sleeves, it's going to be a few pieces. So to start off with, I'll create the shirt. To create the fabric for the shirt, the pattern piece, I'm going to take this tool here. All these three tools are for creating patterns. These tools are for sewing, you can see the, the sewing machine there. And these are for creating curves, and this one's for creating points. So I'll take a rectangular pattern tool and then I'm going to click with my left mouse button and drag down a rectangular, something like this. Then I'm going to switch to my edit pattern tool, which allows me to grab individual points, these are called segment points, and transform them. Holding down shift, I'm going to drag it upwards, something like that. Now I need to create an opening for her neck and an opening for her arm to come out. So I'll take my split line tool in order to add some more points. I'm going to add a point here somewhere at around 50 to make it an exact number, which will make it easier to sew things together and just to keep it a nice clean number. I'm going to right click and then type in my length that I want it to be. And then I'm going to add a point here at around 170. Right click again and type in 170. Then I'll take my edit pattern tool, grab this point and holding down shift, I'm going to draw it down to make an open cut for this dress. Then I'll hold this point and draw it down slightly as well. Now I'm going to take my curve tool and curve this in and curve this slightly too. Something like that to begin with. Then I'll take my transform pattern tool, select the whole pattern, control C to copy it, right click and symmetric paste it. So now whatever changes we're going to do on one side will reflect on the other side. And that is the easiest way to create things like shirts, jackets, etc. Instead of changing one side and then having to try to get the other side the same length. Then I'll select both these pattern pieces, copy and paste. That's Control c and Control v I'm going to rotate around the 3D garment view by holding down my right mouse button. And then using the gizmo, I'm going to drag this to the back. I'm also going to switch to thin textured surface, 
so I can see what's the inside and what's the outside of patterns. Just like real fabric, patterns and, and clothes in MD have an outside side and an inside side. You can see that one side is darker and one side is brighter. When you make clothes, you always want the outside side to be on the outside and the inside side to be on the inside. So as you can see here, the inside side is on the outside. So to remedy that, I'm going to right click and say flip horizontally and now you see the bright side came out and that's how we want it to be. I'm going to arrange it around her something like that. And now to sew it together, I'm going to take this tool called the segment sew tool and I'm going to click on the first line, segment line it's called, and then click on the corresponding one that I want it to sew to. And there you can see these seams are running straight. We want them to be straight. If they are crossed over, like let me just cross them over like that, it's going to mess up our clothes. So you definitely don't want it crossing over like that. You want it to be straight. I'm also going to sew together these parts, and these parts, and these parts here in the front. Then to see what it looks like on her, draping on her, I'm going to press this button. The shortcut is a space bar on my keyboard, which is what I'm going to be using from now on. And then you can see it just dropped right off her. So let's undo that and move this up a bit higher and then simulate again. Now I want to change the shape in the back. I don't want it to have such an open cut. I want it to be more closed around her and I don't want it to have this pointy design in the back either. So I'm going to take my edit pattern tool, hold down shift and draw it up in the back. Then also drag this point up holding down shift. Take my curve tool and give it less of a curve. Then back to my edit pattern tool and draw it up. Simulate. As you can see here, it's sort of sticking out the fabric. I'd like it to be curved like that. So all we need to do is curve it in more in the back. Now I think I need to make the shirt a bit longer and I also want it to be skin tight to her, like a skin tight bodice. So the first thing I'm going to do is select this line and this one, hold down shift and drag it down, something like that. And then to make it tighter around her, not so loose, I'm going to take this point and this one, hold down shift to select two points, and then holding down shift, I'm going to draw them inwards. And there you can see it's much tighter. Now most likely you're going to want to have wrinkles in most of your clothes, but sometimes when you want to have a skin tight bodice, then big wrinkles like these are not very attractive. So to get rid of those, I'm going to click where they are, around here. And then we're just going to curve this part in. So for that, I'm not going to use my curve tool, I'm going to use my curve point tool, which gives me more control. And I'll add a point here, and then I'll add a point where I want to curve it in, so that it only curves here and it doesn't curve too much up there. And that's better. Now we can do a similar thing in the back as well. Click here, and then curve it in a bit here. And that takes it in a bit. And if you want it to be even tighter, then just curve it more until you don't have any fabric wrinkles at all. But I think it's not too bad to have some fabric here. Next, I'm going to make the skirt. So for that, I'm going to select these patterns here, right click and de deactivate pattern only. And now I'm going to make her waistband. So to tell how wide I need to make the waistband pattern, I'm going to take the measure tool, click once here in her belly, and then click again and drag around until I get a circumference measurement. So it's about 560, something like that. So then I'll take my rectangular pattern tool, I'll click once and make the width 560 and the height I'm going to make 50. That's a bit too tall, let's make it actually not so tall. Hold down shift and just draw it up, something like that. Then I'll press Shift F to bring up her arrangement points. And if your model doesn't have arrangement points, then you have to make some for your model. And what these arrangement points do, basically they allow you to wrap patterns around the body. So I'm going to select this waistband here, click this point here, and then you can see it becomes curved as it wraps around her. Shift F to hide them again, and then just bring that closer to her. Take my segment sew tool and sew these ends together, simulate, and there we've got a waistband. 
and to make sure that it stays in place and doesn't get pulled down by the weight of the heavy dress that I'm going to be, the heavy skirt that I'm going to be sewing onto it, I'm going to select it and just turn on elastic and just lower the ratio bit and raise the strength. Something like that, and that should hold it in place. Now let's make the skirt. So I'll take my rectangular pattern tool and then using my rectangular pattern tool, I'm going to click once and make the width not exactly half, but something like that, a bit more than half, something like 300 and the height 500. Let's make that longer. So using transform tool, I'm just going to drag that down to the floor. And that's going to be the front part of the skirt. And then I'm going to copy that, right click, symmetric paste, and that's going to be the back part of the skirt. Then I'll take my edit pattern tool, select this point here, hold down shift and select this point here, and then holding down shift again, I'm going to draw out, 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 to make the bottom of the skirt wider. Then I'll take my segment sew tool and sew this to here and this to here. And then I'm going to click once on the bottom segment of this waistband, hold down shift, you see it turns yellow, click once here and click once there, still holding down shift and then let go and it made two seams for me. Basically dividing this line into two equal seams of the same length for these two. Then I'll take the skirt that belongs in the back, move that to the back, right click, flip horizontally to bring the bright side out, position the skirts and then I'm going to add another fabric and I'll call this skirts and hanging sleeves because I know that's the fabric I'm going to be using for the hanging sleeves too. I'm going to give it a bit of a pink kind of color. You can make a blue or any color that you want. And then I'm going to load in by clicking this button here, a physical property preset that I made for soft hanging fabric. And here it is. I'll double click on the preference file and there it's loaded in. Then to apply that onto our skirt, I'm going to select this fabric and just drag and drop it onto the skirt. And that pink is a bit horrific, isn't it? Let's make it purple. Then I'll press the spacebar or the button here to simulate. And there we've got a dress. Now it's rather tight on this part. And we can see it's twisting around. So let's first deactivate the elastic on this waistband. And then we can manipulate it easier and drag it down where we want it to start. All right, something like that. The elastic turned off. If we look from the side, we can see that this waistband is sticking out because it's too wide. So I'm going to select it with my transform pattern tool, click the middle pivot point so it turns orange, and then just scale it down. Something like that, so it sits tightly against her without sticking out into the air. Maybe even a touch more. There we go. Now it's very smooth here, and maybe that's the effect you want, but I want to see some more wrinkles, starting even from up here. So to do that, I'm going to select with my Edit Pattern tool. I'll select this point here, and then holding down Shift, select this point there, and then draw it out a bit. And then also make a lot more fabric on the bottom, by making the bottom wider. As you can see, the more fabric that gets added, the heavier the skirt becomes and the waistband starts to slip down, down, down. So let's activate the elastic. Sometimes activating the elastic on the entire pattern is a good idea, and sometimes even just on one line does the trick. And I think we need some more fabric. But before I add any more fabric, I'm going to select the skirt, hold on shift, select this one, and lower the particle distance to 10, just so I can see it a bit better. When the particle distance is lower, everything becomes much prettier. You have more detail, you can see the wrinkles more distinctly, but it takes much longer to simulate. So while working on it, depending on how strong your computer is, you may want to work at either 20 or 15 or 10 if you have a strong computer. Usually when I'm finished and I want to export it, I take it down to 3 or to 5. In some cases, even to two, when it's something like a button that needs to be very smooth. All right, so let's add a bit more fabric. Again, I'll select these points and just scale them outwards. Raise the particle distance so it goes a bit faster, and then simulate. And here you can see sometimes there are issues when the fabric sort of gets swallowed up into itself and you see the dark inner side coming out. 
just pluck at it and it should be fine. Now you can see by having a straight cut here in the bottom, we're getting a lot of fabric adding on on the sides. So if I like, I pull at it, you can see it's, it's sort of dragging and draping here. Here it's sort of just touching the floor and here it's... If we want it to look nicer, not just like there's these long bat wings on the sides, we take our curve tool and curve down the front part and the back part or the back part separately. And that adds more material here as well. So then you can see we have also fabric lying down here in the front, not just on the sides. And I'm going to make them even a bit wider and touch wider here in the top as well. If you need to tug at the fabric like this to get those inside sides back to the inside, the best thing to do is to add pins. The way you add a pin is you simply press W and click and then you get a pin and then you can press again here and that helps you just to sort of tug it apart and get it sorted out. Control W to clear them. So here we've got a nice decent amount of fabric. I think that will do. Looks nice. Now let's activate our shirt again. So I'll select it and right click activate. Now you can see it's beneath the skirt, so to bring it out, I'm going to shift click on those two pattern pieces and just draw it out on top of the skirt and make sure that this one is out on top of it as well. And then simulate. And there it's on top now. So now let's make the golden decorative waistband. For that, I'm actually going to make the shirt a tiny bit shorter. Something like, let's see, like that. And let's just give that shirt a nicer color to match the skirt. We can use our color picker and pick something similar, something like that. And then I'm going to add a fabric and this is going to be for the waistband. Then I'll click the load texture icon and navigate to my folder where I have my seamless trim. And here it is. I'll double click it and there it is. Apply to my fabric. Now one last thing before we do the waistband. I'm seeing some fabric lumps around here. I think it would be nicer if the shirt was tighter. So to make it tighter, I'm just going to push this inner line inwards and then simulate. And that makes it tighter. And that looks better. Perhaps also a tiny bit tighter here in the back. There we go. So that's it for part one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And in part two, we'll create the sleeves, the draping sleeves, the decorative waistband, and refine our dress with some other details to complete it. If you want to know how to create all kinds of beautiful, dynamic 3D clothing, check out my Mastering Marvelous Designer online training program. It's 52 and a half hours long, with a complete beginner's course and 11 clothes making workshops, where I teach you all you need to create gorgeous, dynamic 3D clothing. See you in part two.